All right. So at this point, we want to reinforce what we're talking about. All right. So on the board over here, we have this big molecule. Who can tell me what that is? Can you raise your hand? All right. Someone come. All right. And where does the DNA stay in a eukaryotic cell? Mike, right, would you go up there and label the nucleus on the board for us? All right. Um, now, we've got the DNA. DNA is like our instruction manual, our cookbook. Okay, but if we want to make a protein, are we going to send the DNA out into the cytoplasm? No. Why not, you meant? Because it's too valuable to get messed up, so it's mutated. Right, if it gets mutated, the cell might not be able to function properly. So what are we going to do instead? Am I? Excellent. We're going to copy one half the double strand, and you said we're going to make what? A copy of mRNA. mRNA. Okay, would you like to come up here and leave the class doing that? Okay, so what happens to our DNA to start with? What's it going to do? It's going to, it's going to split. It's going to unzip. So, unzip it. Okay. All right. And let's copy the left hand side. So, um, somebody tell where the first three nucleotides she needs. Amen. The, well, we have TAC in the DNA, so what's the mRNA going to be? A U G. A U G. And I I'll warn you, those are a little bit larger, so you're going to have to slide them up as we go. All right, A U G. Okay. Who so can tell me what the next three are going to be? Summer. A U C. A U C. All right. I like that you guys are matching up A with U instead of. T, right? That's one of our three differences between DNA and RNA. All right, what's our next triplet? Jamie. CAG. Who's got the next one? Mine. GUA. And the last one, someone who hasn't answered Oreo. Um, UAG. UAG. Excellent. Now, why do you think I've called them out in threes? Codons are always in threes. They're triplets. Okay. Um, so we're going to break this up into triplets. Thank you, Amari. Did you just sit down? All right. Okay. So we're going to read it in threes. Each codon codes for how many amino acids? One. One. So one codon to one amino acid, which means how many nucleotides does it take to code for one amino acid? Three. So in this case, we have 15 nucleotides. How many amino acids can we code for? Five. Five. Everybody got that? Yes. If we had 30 nucleotides, we could do how many amino acids? Two. Mm -hmm. Two. No. Three. Six. Six. Three. Six. We have okay. 30 nucleotides. Ten. Because 30 divided by three oh, equals ten. ten. You got it? Understand? Right, let's do another one. If we had 60 nucleotides, 20 amino acids. If we wanted 12 amino acids, how many nucleotides would we need? 36. 36. Okay. All right. So we have this lovely strand of RNA up here. Now, tell me how you know this is RNA. There are a couple of different reasons. Amaya? Because it has U's instead of T's. It has U's instead of T's. What's another reason? Is there another hand over here, Nesta? No? Amen. It is a single strand. Okay, and the other one's a little bit difficult with the Bohr model. Is there the third difference between DNA and RNA? The sugar is ribose sugar. Excellent. Okay, ribose sugar. You can kind of maybe tell the difference here. This is black and this is kind of a purpley color. So it's a little bit different. All right. So we've made our single strand in RNA. What's it going to do? I had a question. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so is there a reason that the pieces for RNA are larger than DNA, or is it just? Uh, it's a manufacturing, okay. um, unfortunate circumstance <laughs> is what it is. I was wondering if like Yeah, unfortunately, that. because you, you would think it would match up nicely and they'd fit together. They don't. So this one tricky part, there's a second tricky part we're going to get to with this um, particular manipulator. All right, so we have the single strand of RNA. What's it going to do? Ariana. Okay, you're in the right ballpark. We're going to take it out of the nucleus. Okay, it's going.
going to so what's the ribosome? You want to come up here and label this the ribosome? Sure you do. Okay. What's going to happen to our DNA when that happens? It zips back up, right? Because again, the DNA has to kind of stick together and this thing and be protected here in the nucleus. All right. Now you guys told me that would be divided into threes. If you will let me, I'm going to do this instead. Does that work? All right, because that 15 pieces would be a little bit cumbersome to go through there. Thank you. All right, got your code on chart out. All right, so messenger RNA is the one that looks like a ribbon. It's a long single strand. Okay, tRNA has how many bases on it ever? Three, because it's going to match a codon. What do they call the tRNA molecules? They're not codons, they are anticodons, they're the opposite. All right, so using your code on chart, if you look up AUG, what amino acid does that code for? Jerusalem. Met, which is methionine, that's our start code on. Now, we know we need methionine, but what tRNA molecule is gonna bring that to the ribosome? What's the opposite of AUG? Is it TAC? UAC, because it's still transfer what? RNA, and so RNA always has uracil. So look here, we have a UAC, and it's going to bring that. You see how the codon and the anticodon match up? Okay, and it brought us the methionine. Looking at your codon chart, AUC, someone who hasn't answered. Francis. All right, the, the tRNA is going to be UAG. What amino acid does this codon code for? A mic. Okay, isoleucine. So we're looking for a UAG with an isoleucine, and it's going to come here. All right. Now, what happens to these two amino acids? They bond together. What kind of bond do we use between amino acids? Polypeptide. Peptide bonds, because polypeptide event is another name for a uh, protein. protein. Excellent. And since that's bonded, this molecule could go out in the cytoplasm and pick up another methionine molecule. Question, Jamie? Yeah. Got that? All right. CAG codes for what amino acid? Okay. okay. Glycine. And what is our anti codon? G. G U C. Here it is. Same thing. What do we need here between these two amino acids? Peptide bond. Same thing's going to happen here. All right. GUA codes for Avinash. Histidine. You sure about that? Oh, no. Valine. Okay. And what is the anti codon that's going to bring that valine molecule? Come on. CAU. Okay. So here we have this one. And we have one more peptide bond. Okay. What does UAG code for? Stop codon. What does that mean? That's the end of our amino acid. Okay, so the, the ribosome is going to let go of this. It's going to fold up, take on its three dimensional shape, and then it can do its job. Remember when we studied enzymes, how the shape is so important to the function of the protein? Okay, how are we feeling about this? You ready to try this with a partner? Yeah. All right, behind Emad on the back desk, there are three different things. Uh, you'll also need a dry erase marker. You may pick up one of the pink ones, please, and hold it up. Can you guys see that? Okay, what kind of molecule do you think that is? DNA. How do you know it's DNA? It has T's in it. All right, pick up one of the green ones, please. You're doing a great job, Vanna. Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune. Okay, well, what do you think that might become? RNA. What kind of RNA? Yeah. mRNA, because it's going to be made from the DNA, what do we call that process? Transcription. Excellent. Transcription, making an R. It has an R in the middle of it. Transcription. All right. From the mRNA, then we can decode it and find our what? Amino acid sequence, which is our protein. He's already got one held up. Can you figure out what you're going to do? Yes. All right. Um, so you're going to transcribe and then translate it. Work with your table partner. Use your code on chart. There are markers over there and markers up here. And then call me over and I'll check it when you're when you're done. One for the two of you. Anyone, you think you're challenged by yourself?